Hello everyone, my name is Finding Pepper, and welcome to the Terrian Generation series. This is episode 2. Today, we are going to be adding caves and ores to our Terrian Generator. And also, we're going to be adding scrolling, because that is a very requested feature, and it's fairly easy to add. This episode might be a bit confusing, so if you don't understand something, don't be shy to ask about it. I'll try my best to answer any questions you have. Asking questions is a very good thing. It helps you learn if you're just copying my code. And that isn't exactly learning. You should really try to understand what I'm doing, so in the future you can try to make your own projects like this. So let's go over what we did last time. So let's just run the project. So we have multiple biomes and we have our our terrain generating like this, and we have our water that adjusts to match the terrain levels, and we have the different trees that match the terrain. Okay, so looking at this, we have a lot of um, diversity up here on the surface, but down below the surface, really not much is going on. It's just gray. So this episode, we're going to be working on making this lower area a bit more interesting. So, before we start coding, let us save this as a copy. So, if we make any mistakes, we can load the old, um, the old project. We can just start again from the old project. We don't have to do that over again. So, this is a good habit to get into. So, first, I'm just going to do... A few things that I forgot to do last episode. Um, just some simple things. So at the beginning, we're going. We set a to zero. We're also going to set b to zero. Remember, these are the variables that control um, the variation in our terrain. So this is what makes it interesting. We're also going to set the biome to a random, a random biome because we have that. We're one to four because there's four biomes. Okay, and now we're going to do scrolling. So, we need a variable camera x. It's going to be for all sprites, so it's in capital letters. And this is the x position of our camera. Um, so at the beginning, we're going to set camera x to 240. This is the farthest left it can go, because as we have it here, the very left of the screen is uh, treated as zero by our project, an x is zero. So therefore the middle of the screen is 240, and when our camera is at the middle, it will be 240. So just like right now, this is as far left as it can go. So we'll set it to 240 at the beginning. Now I'm just going to show the camera x variable and make it a slider, and change its range to be like 240 to 760, and you'll see why 760 in a minute. So the first thing we need to do to add scrolling, we're going to go over here, and here where it says set x to, draw index minus 240, we're going to replace the 240 with a camera x. And here at the draw tree at, we're also going to replace the 240 here with a camera x. So then, I'm going to run the project, and if I move the slider, I should be able to scroll left and right. Okay, so now we can make this, this repeat until, we can make it 999, and then it will be bigger. So let's try that. Oh, and I'd like to point out that um, if we don't want to have to wait for it to generate, you know, I'm doing this so we can troubleshoot it better, but we can remove the refresh pen block from in here and put it at the end. Um, we're actually going to put it in a forever loop just so we can control the camera after this generates, but if we run this, then it will generate instantly, and then we can scroll left and right. 
but you'll notice that our trees are bunching up at the edge. So, let's go over here. And we're going to set draw index up here to camera x minus 240. Run that. So now our trees don't bunch up at the left edge anymore, but they still bunch up at the right edge. So we'll replace this repeat loop with a repeat until loop. And then put the middle part back in. We're going to check with an or if either draw index is greater than length of white positions or draw index is greater than camera x plus 240. Okay, let's also, if you're wondering why this is 240, it's because the screen is 480 wide, so 240 is half of a screen. So now, our trees are not bunching up at the left edge or the right edge. Wonderful. Now, we are going to add some controls so we can use the arrow keys to scroll. First, I am going to make a new variable to make this just a little bit cleaner. I'm going to call it wor uh, World Width, and this will be for all sprites, it's capital letters. So, at the top, we're going to set World Width to 1000. And at the repeat until loop here, instead of 999, we're going to check world width minus 1. Now after here, I'm going to make a new broadcast and call it done generating. Okay, now in our stage, I'm going to get a when I receive done generating. And then on here, a forever loop, and change camera X by right arrow key minus left arrow key. So you might know this trick. When Boolean values, that's the true or false value, are put in um, a number value here, they get uh, converted to either 1 or 0. Zero false, one true. This will change it by negative one if the right. It'll change it by one if the right arrow key is pressed, negative one if the left arrow is pressed, and zero if either both of them or neither of them are pressed. Now we want it to move a little quicker than that, so I'm going to multiply it by ten. Okay, let's run that. You can see we can scroll, except we can scroll off the world. So I'm going to add limits to that. See, it looks quite strange if we scroll off the world, <laughs> um, especially on the left side. So I'm going to check if camera X is less than 240. Set camera X to 240. And if camera X is greater than world width minus 240, so if it's off the right edge of the screen, then we're going to set it to world width minus 240. All right, let's try out that. So we can no longer screw off the left edge, and we can no longer screw off the right edge. Perfect. And now we can hide the camera X variable. Okay, so that is scrolling done. Next, it is time to add some ORs. So we're going to make a new block called add OR. Run without screen refresh. We'll put it here and then start building it up. Now we need to make a list to keep track of where our ORs are. So I'm going to call it 
ores. For this sprite only. And this is going to store all the data about an or the ores. So how this is going to work is for each ore, there's going to be three values. The first is X, the second is Y, and the third is type. So every time it adds an ore, it's going to add an X value, a Y value, and a type value. I can delete those, hide the list. Um, so when we add an ore, we're going to add a random amount of ores uh, from zero to two. This might seem like a lot of ores, but keep in mind that they're going to be dispersed all throughout up and down, so it won't actually be that many ores. So first we're going to add x two ores. Remember the first value is x. Then we're going to add um, a random amount from negative 175 to y minus 10. So this is going to disperse it uh, randomly from up here just below the dirt to down at the bottom of the world. Okay, and then for now I'm going to add 1 to ores. I'm just going to make it uh, the same or just for now, and then I'll change it. So the type is going to be um, a number. So I'm going to have four ores in mine. One is coal, two is iron, three is gold, and four is diamond. I'm just simplifying it now. You can add more ores if you'd like. But anyway, we're just going to start with one, which will be coal. So I'm going to go to the refresh pen custom block and down at the bottom we're going to loop through the ores list and draw each of the ores so how we're going to do that is start by setting draw index to one and then we're going to repeat length of ores divided by three it's divided by three because each ore has three entries, remember? Then each time we will change draw index by three to get to the next ore. And in the middle here, we're going to go to an X of item draw index of ores um, minus camera X. So this is the X position, draw index, and for the Y position, we're going to go to item draw index plus one of ores, and we don't need to subtract camera X from that because we don't have vertical scrolling. We also need to set the pen color. Um, I'm just going to set it to black. We're going to then pen down and pen and we also need we also need to delete all of ores at the beginning here. So let's try that out. Okay, there we go. Now we have lots of little black flecks of ores. Okay, but you'll notice that the ores are bunching up off screen. Um, in here, we're going to make sure that um, an and both item draw index of ores minus camera x is greater than negative 240 so this makes sure it's to the right of the left edge of the screen and also that it is less than negative 2 it is less than positive 240 sorry and then we're going to put this on top of here and make sure to move the change draw index out of this if statement so it will still go to the next or even if it is off screen. So here we go. Now we have no more ore bunching up. Okay, now we're going to add some more types of ores. So I'm going to make a new variable temp. We're going to set temp here to what we have here. 
this pick random negative 175 to y minus 10. I'm going to replace that with the temp variable. Then we're going to check what the value of temp is and then decide based on that what or to add. So I'm going to make this very simple to start with. And you can make this more complicated, but this is just an example. So we're going to um, check if temp is greater than negative 60. So if it's high up, then we're going to add random 1 to 2 and stop the script. Now if temp is greater than negative 120 and also less than negative 60 because this stopped. Then we're going to add random 2 to 3 and then if it's less than negative 120 then it's going to add random 2 to 4. Now 1 is coal, 2 is iron, 3 is gold, and 4 is diamond. So we're going to make that draw the correct colors here. So, get an equals and an if, and check if item draw index plus two of ors equals one. So this, this draw index plus two is the type, and if it's one, it's cool. If item draw index plus two of ors equals two, then we're get, that's going to be iron, so this is going to be like a lighter white color. Uh, light gray, I mean, and then if it is 3, that's gold, then this will be yellow, there we go, nice yellow color, and if it is 4, that will be diamond. Okay, shall we run that and try it out? So now you see we have a nice distribution of ores. We have coal at the top, and uh, diamonds down at the bottom, and gold toward the bottom, and iron all around. So you can play with this distribution how you like. I am simplifying it, like I said, for this, just to show you the concepts. Um, but I do encourage you to add your own ores and distributions. So, the next thing we're going to do is add caves. So, we're going to make a list called caves for the sprite only. And it's going to work similar to the ors, except for the caves, we're going to have x, then y, and then radius, then direction, and then length. So, five things. And... The x is the x, y is y, radius obviously is um, how big it is. Direction is what um, direction the cave is going in. So we'll use that to build off more caves. So we're going to like build it like a snake. And then length is how long it is. So um, the longer it is, the higher the chance that it will um, end. Okay, so at the beginning, we're going to delete all of caves. Then we're going to make a new block called add cave. Run without screen refresh. Then we'll put it right here. Start coding it up. For the caves, we're going to make a variable called time since cave uh, for this sprite only and what that will do we're gonna set it to zero here what that will do is determine or like tell how long it has been since there's been a cave and the higher that number is the greater the probability that we will add a new one. So we're going to check the less than if big random 1 to 1000 is less than a time since cave. And we're also going to change time since 
Okay, oops. Time is since caved by one. And we are going to... Um, in here, we're going to set time since cave to 1, because we just added a cave. Okay, so now we're going to actually add things to the list. We're going to add X to caves, and then I'm going to start with just the caves that, um, that originate on the surface. So we're also going to add y to caves. Then for the radius, we're going to add random 15 to 35, and then we're going to divide it by 10. So this will actually be 1.5 to 3.5. And the reason I'm not doing 1.5 to 3.5 is because this will always give us nice um, decimal numbers, so when with one decimal point, and if we do it 1.5 to 3.5, then this will give us all manner of long decimals, which we do not really want. Alright, so next is the direction. So it's either going to be going sort of down and to the left, or down and to the right. So you're going to get an if-else... So random 1 to 2 equals 1, so half the time it's going to be to the left. And then we're going to add, pick random, negative 105, say, to negative 150. And I'm just using these numbers to be good angles. You can choose whatever you want. I don't want it to be going straight down, or like straight left or right, or up, definitely not. Um, and if it's to the right, 105 to 150. And then, we for the length, we're going to add 1 to caves, just because it's starting at a length of 1. In our refresh pen block, we are going to draw the cave. So we're going to use a similar loop to this. Um, now we're going to remove the colors, but these things will be very similar. So we're going to replace the ores with caves, and we're going to divide by 5 and change by 5, because there's 5 bits of data for each cave. The X and Y will be the same method. We're going to set pen size to um, item index plus 2 of keys, because this is the radius, and then we're also going to multiply it by 2, because it's radius, not diameter, and the pen size is diameter. We're also going to set pen color to, um, for now I'm just going to set it to the sky color, because it's MP. Now you see we have these little circles appearing here. So that is what we want. So right now, all of our caves are starting at the surface. And I'd like them to also start down lower too. So at the top of the add cave block, I'm going to set the temp variable to random 1 to 2. 1 will mean it's on the surface, and 2 will mean it is underground. If temp equals 1, then we'll put the Y here, and the else we will put what we have from ores, except we'll change the range a little bit. Um, instead of negative 175, we'll make it negative 150 to y minus 10, and we're going to add that to caves as the y value. This should be in the else part of the if statement. Okay, and down here, we're going to check if temp 1 
If so, we're going to put what we have here for the direction. Um, if it's underground, it can be in any direction, so I'm going to negative 180 to 180. Okay. Now, if we try that out, you can see we have caves underground and on the surface. For the next part, I'm going to put the refresh pen inside this loop so we can watch it as it is generating. And I am also going to decrease the world width a bit to say 500. Now we are going to make a new block called extend cave. Run without screen refresh. We'll stake it after the add cave block. This custom block will be, as the name suggests, for extending our caves because right now we just have the very beginning of them. This block will be pretty complicated, so again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. So, to start, we're going to loop through each of the caves. I'm going to use the draw index variable for that. Even though we're not really drawing, we can still use it. And we're going to repeat uh, for the length of caves divided by 5. So, we're going to loop through our cave. And each time, of course, changing draw index by 5 at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to use a blank value and direction to mean that that part of the cave doesn't need to be extended upon. So once we build out a little, um, a little bit further from this, so let's, let's take this little circle as an example. So I'm going to move my mouse pointer to show where the cave goes. So, if it goes down here, then it's going to create another little cave here, and then it will make the direction and length and x, y, all that, all those variables. And then it will set the direction of the previous one to blank to show that this one does not need to be extended. Then it will keep doing that. So, we're going to check, now uh, with the greater than, if item draw index, oops, if item draw index plus 3 of caves, now this is the direction, draw index plus 3, that's the direction, is greater than the empty value, so that means that this part of the cave can be extended. Now, if this is true, we are going to uh, add some more to the cave list. So, the first thing we need to add to the caves list is the x value. So, to do this, um, we need to move in the direction of direction. And this requires um, some more complicated math. Um, which I'll just show you, involving um, a sine and cosine, and it's the formula for the move steps block. So basically, we're making a move steps block uh, using variables, not the x and y position. We're going to round this, just to make it a whole number. We're going to start with item draw index of caves, and we're going to add to that, then times. So the first value is by how much we're moving, and the second value is um, the sign of the direction. So we'll put a sign. So the first one, by how much we're moving it, we're going to um, change it by half of the radius. So that's dry index plus 2 divided by 2. So if it's a bigger cave, it will move more because we we don't need as many we don't need as many little circles to make the cave. And then we're going to multiply it by sine of the direction, which is item draw index plus three of caves. 
Okay, now I just realized that I don't think I've mentioned exactly how we're going to be doing the caves, but it might be obvious by now. Basically, we're going to have a bunch of little circles um, in a trail so it looks like a cave. Okay, now we're going to do a very similar thing for the Y, except this time instead of draw index, it will be draw index plus 1, because draw index of caves is the X, draw index plus 1 is the Y. These will be the same, but instead of sine, it will be cos. So, this is essentially the move steps formula, except we're go doing it with these lists. Next, we're, next up is the radius. So for that, we're going to just, for now, I'm just going to add the current radius. And then, we're going to add the direction. And this will be um, I'm going to add a random number from negative 2 to 2 and then I'm going to multiply it by 10 and I'm going to sum it with the current direction so current direction plus um, a random amount. And then, finally, for the length, I'm just going to add uh, item draw index plus 4 of k is plus 1. And you'll see what the length has to do last in a minute. And then, I'm going to replace the old direction value was blank, so it does not extend on that one. So replace item dry index plus 3 of k is with blank. Okay, let us run this. So as you can see, the k is are making little kv things. <laughs> not a great way to describe it, but there we go. They are squiggling around. Okay, now I would like to end the caves sometimes, so they don't just continue to infinity. Here I'm going to get an if-else. In the else, I'll put the direction, and in the if, I'll put add blank. So sometimes we're going to add an empty value to caves instead of a new direction. So this will be empty for the direction, so it won't extend it. Now, we're going to check if a random value from 1 to 5,000, which is quite big, but this is, we're going to check if it's less than item draw index plus 4 of caves, which is the length. So, the longer the cave, the higher the chance that it will end. Okay, let's run that. So there we have a cave, and it ended. We have another cave, they ended. Making this 1 to 5,000, making this 5,000 a bigger number will make it a higher chance, uh, a lower chance of ending. So... 8,000 will mean they won't end as much. There'll be longer caves. These aren't great examples, um, but they will in generally continue for longer. Now, of course, with randomness, it does happen sometimes that we have outliers that are really short or outliers that are really long. Also, with this cave, you'll notice it is extending or continuing off the bottom of the world. Now, to fix that, I'm going to check with an OR if the Y position 
that is um, dry index plus one of KUs is less than negative 180 or it's greater than um, the uh, the height of the terrain at that point item dry index of k is of y positions and I'll also round this x just to make sure that is a whole number because indexes of a list are always whole numbers and we're going to check if again if the y position of the k if I don't draw index plus one of k is is less than the current y level. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be greater. It should, if it's greater than the height of the terrain. Okay. I'm also going to end it if it goes off the left or right edge of the screen. So I'm going to get another if else. Put this in the else, condi else condition, and. Um, the add a blank to his and this one I'm just splitting this into two checks so this one doesn't get too long so I'm gonna get this or this one will be a little bit simpler if draw index of chaos is less than zero so that's off the left or item draw index of chaos is greater than the world width Let's try that. Oh, okay. And you'll notice that these ones that are on the surface are immediately ending. Um, that is proof that um, what we're doing is working, um, but we are going to fix that in a moment. So you'll see these ones that are going off the bottom are ending. So it looks like that is working. Now here at the top, I mean at this, sorry, at this if statement, where we check if it's greater than the y position, we're just going to subtract like 8 from this. And that will mean it needs to be 8 above the surface of the world to end. Okay, if we try that out, the one starting from the surface should not end. Okay, but it does look like they are ending. It's hard to tell if they're ending when they get above the surface, but it does look like they are ending. Alright, wonderful. Now, you will notice that as soon as the world stops generating, the caves also stop generating. So, we're going to go over here. And I'm just going to... After this, repeat like 200 times. 200 is just an arbitrary number. Just pick that. Um, but it's a bunch of times, so it's going to extend most of the remaining caves to their fullest extent. Okay, yeah. so I did change this to 8,000 because that is uh, a little bit better amount of caves. Now we are going to make our caves uh, have branches so sometimes continue in two directions rather than just one okay so here where we replace it with blank sometimes we are not going to replace it with blank so I'm going to say if random 1 to 200 let's say equals 1 now this is another number you can fiddle with to see what you like the smaller it is, the more branchy your keys will be. But if you make it too low, then this will get really laggy, I can warn you. Um, but in the if, we're going to replace it with uh, just a random number. So, let's try that. Yep, there we go, that cave just branched. That cave just branched. That cave just branched. That cave just branched. You see these branches are happening. Very nice. So you will notice 
um, that these kids are writing over things like water and trees. So we are going to fix that, not entirely, but we're going to make it a bit better. So, first of all, to make sure it doesn't draw over the trees, we're going to draw the trees after the caves. So, we're going to take out this block. Uh, I'm just going to throw it. Now, we are going to have another loop like this. Um... Draw it next to one. This time we're just we're not going to have a divided by. We're going to repeat length of tree positions, and each time to change draw index by one, not five. We can take out this stuff. We are going to um, reset the pen size to two at the beginning of the draw tree at custom block, though, just to make sure the stem, the I mean the trunks, are the right size. So, here we're going to check, replace these caves with tree positions. Here we're going to draw tree at, draw index of tree positions minus camera x, uh, and item draw index of tree positions of Y levels your Y positions so this will get the Y position of the tree and the biome will be item draw index of tree positions of biomes we're gonna stick that in here what we should also check if item uh, item draw index of tree positions of y positions greater than the water level, just like we did for the trees before, we're also going to make sure the tree doesn't draw itself on top of a cave. To do that, I'm actually going to go into the costumes and draw a tiny dot. Size 2 right in the middle. Make sure it is centered. We can put it in a bitmap if we want, and then we'll get a nice square. Now, the beginning when the flag is clicked, we're going to hide. Um, just so we don't show the dot. And then at that um, draw tree at, we're going to. Uh, we're going to change y by negative 2. Um, to go down a little bit into the ground. And if we're still touching uh, the sky color, that means we are on top of a cave. So we should not draw the tree. I don't usually like to use the touching color block, but... Um, at this point, it is pretty useful. Um, then we're going to change Y by 2. In here, we should stop the script. And don't forget to show it before we do it. Then hide here and hide here. Okay. We'll run that. See, our trees are still generating normally. They are not generating underwater. And let's see what happens if a cave goes on top of them. Which is not seeming to happen right now, but we can hope for it. Okay, there we go. That, sh that cave just went on top of the tree, and then the tree there disappeared. Our caves are still drawing across our water, and now we're going to fix that. So we're going to go into here, 
in here where we draw the K's, we need to get some if else's for the color. We're going to check the Y position of the cave, that is item draw index plus one of caves, is greater than the Y position of, uh, of the ground, so that is the X position of the cave of the ground or the item draw index of caves of Y positions. And then again we're going to subtract, uh, I mean add 5 to this just so it, um, it has some room. We're going to actually have another if statement in the middle part. This one will check if item draw index plus one of caves is less than the water level. Okay. And actually over here, this should be a minus. I'm sorry. Okay, so in the else here, where it is above ground and not underwater, then we're going to set it to the sky color. And well, I'm just going to get some water here. So to pick from if it is underwater yet above ground, we're going to set it to the water color. And in the else where it is underground and underwater, I'm going to, or when it is underground, um, I'm going to set it to a darker color. I'm going to stick that here and run the project. Yeah, so here you'll see that when the when the kids go underwater, they turn a blue color, so it blends nicely. It doesn't just have a streak through the middle of the water. And here these underground caves are dark, and then when they go to the surface, they are light. So this is working pretty well. I'm going to stop it. Go up here. I'm going to remove the refresh pin from here. Um, so this should go instantly. I'll set the world width to a thousand. I'm gonna run it. Let's wait a moment. It will take quite a while because um, of all these caves, we are having to loop through the whole cave list to make this. But here we have our full world with all its caves in it, and it looks great. So, I believe that is it for this episode. I do hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions for the next episode would be appreciated. Um, right now, I'm thinking I will add some more biomes. I, I know a player is a pretty requested feature. It will be a little while before I add that, because I do want to eventually turn this into a tile-based generator. So it will use this to fill a tile grid. And then we can add our player because it will be a lot um, a lot more useful to have a player in a, a tile-based game. You can do more things with that. So, like if we wanted to make mine Paper Minecraft, that is a tile-based game. For those of you who are more interested in the Tile Scrolling Platformer expansion, um, the next video I will be I will create will be one of those. There is a poll for um, new features you want, so if you're interested in that, you should vote so I can hear what you want added. Um, and I believe that is all I have to say. I hope you have a great rest of your day and goodbye.